Hi hey guys, um, just released version 2.55 of the Dark Arts. I'm just going to show you uh, just a few new tr uh, tips and tricks. Uh, since I haven't really shown you guys too much since uh, version 2.0, so um, I am planning to release a few more tutorials so uh, in the very uh, near future, so keep an eye out for those. Okay, so to show you some of the new tricks and stuff, I'm just going to build a fence really quickly. And uh, actually, I might just show you the, uh, uh, it's the new ground step that we've got. So, I don't know if you guys are probably, imagine you guys run into this issue where you've got like a really, really dense mesh, like so, and the ground snap's been rather slow, so yeah, if you right click on the, the, uh, the ground snap, you've got a few uh, extra snapping options now. So I'm just going to click on the old ground snap, to give you an idea of just how slow it is, and you can see it ticking away. So it's, it's quite slow and quite uh, cumbersome, so I've actually, uh, I've actually updated it, uh, rewritten the algorithm, and uh, yeah, sped it up quite a, uh, quite a bit, so if I click on it now, bam, straight away. So, uh, yeah, uh, show for the uh, speed of things up to touch for you guys. Okay, so I'm just going to snap this object here. I'll call that fence. And um, I'll just probably do the UVs for this guy, just in case I haven't uh, shown you guys this little trick. So, anytime you've got like a, a, a cube sort of object, uh, six sided, uh, you can. Uh, it's going to use these, and there's just a little auto button. So if I click on that, and it's just going to ask me where I want my back face. So I'm just going to say right at the back of that. So if I go to my UVs now, you can see that's uh, the UVs all been nicely done. So that's quite cool. Okay, so I'm just going to need, so I've got my fence plank. It's going to need a little post for my fence. I might just go to a bit bigger. Okay, so that, uh, that looks kind of cool. Okay, so that's good. Okay, so uh, I'll just call that post, and I'll just uh, call here redo the UVs for this guy. So once again, you basically select your, whatever your, the main face is going to be, and you click auto, and so that at the back as well. So let's see those UVs done, nice and quick, nice and handy. Okay, so um, let's start building our fence line. So I'm just going to create, and you use any sort of curve that you want. Uh, it's going to be demonstrating the new uh, object on curve tool. So let's just create some sort of random sort of fence line. Uh, it can be you know curved as well, like so. Okay, be happy with that. Looks pretty uh, pretty flash. Okay, so just going to open up our new uh, our new tools, which is the object along selected curve. And uh, this has had a bit of work done to it uh, over the last uh, week or two. Okay, so if I select an object, so objects to copy, so there can be multiple objects and it'll just randomize through them. And then you basically select the target curve and you just go duplicate along curve. And you can see it's uh, rest along, doing some interesting stuff. Okay, um, I've opened up the options and I'll just put this bit to 360s for the moment. Now let's run the operation again and you see it's be a bit faster. Okay, and I'll just explain what that does in a second. But um, so one of the issues, obviously, when you're putting these uh, these objects along your curve is quite often you want to know just how many um, objects that that, uh, that you need to actually butt fit along the curve. So you do have actually a feature down here which is estimate copies, and with the curve selected and I'm clicking that, it basically tells me that I need 176 copies to uh, have that flow all the way through this uh, this curve. So I'm actually going to want a bit of spacing in there. So I want say I want say 0.2 is my spacing. And I can click on the estimate copies again, and it's telling me I need about 147 copies. So I'm going to type that in, 147, and it's going to go duplicate on curve again. And you can see that races along nicely for us. Okay, now if I go to the top view, you'll, uh, you might uh, see one of the issues that we're getting when we hit corners. And it's probably an issue that um, any sort of uh, uh, um, object on curve sort of script uh, does. So it's basically uh, once it hits these corners, it's, it's, it gets a bit mixed up, and you're getting a bit of overshoot too. So as you can see, this is just hanging over that corner, and you know, like if you're building a fence in this case, you know, yeah, you're probably not wanting that. So you do have quite a nice feature in here that can actually uh, rectify that. So I'm just going to delete that, and basically it's this uh, post angle. So basically it's saying that uh, any angle that's greater than whatever this number is, uh, it's going to recognize it as a corner. So, um, if I click on the duplicate to long curve again, you can see it does things slightly different. 
So basically, it's, it's finding, it's detecting where, where curves are greater than um, 30 degrees, and it's kind of breaking it up for us, which is quite cool. So if I go to our top view, you can kind of see that, uh, you know, we're getting a much better fit on these, uh, on these corners. I mean, some things, yeah, it's pretty hard to get perfect, but uh, we're getting uh, quite a nice fence now. Look around here. Okay, um, it actually has a, a secondary feature as well. So if I, I'm just going to delete that for a second, and it's going to uh, regenerate. And this time we're actually going to use this little post option here, if you are building a fence. So as you can see, it's optional. So I'm going to click on that post, click post. And I'm going to say that I want a, um, a post every, say, five copies. So basically what that means is uh, for every every five planks that get put down, we get a post inserted. So I'm just going to put this back up to 360 and duplicate along that curve again. And as you can see, we're getting our post inserted every five copies. So quite cool, quite useful. Now if you're doing train tracks or if you're doing whatever you're doing. Okay, so delete that. Um, okay, so um, once again, I'm going to use this uh, post angle, and I'm going to put that back to 30. And you're going to notice that it does an interesting thing, uh, interesting thing with the post. So if I click on duplicate along curve now, basically wherever it's detecting an angle that's above 30 degrees, it's saying, okay, this is a corner, and there should be a post there, as if you were building a proper fence. So kind of a cool feature. Okay, so pretty happy with that. Um, one of the other cool things you can do, and I'm not going to show you in this particular tutorial, but um, if you select your group and you select your objects, you can actually uh, animate them. Um, so uh, that gives you some pretty good possibilities. Um, you can also reverse your curve directions, have any of your Y only um, axes just to give you clean rotations. Um, so yeah, quite a few things that you can actually do. Um, so I'm going to close this down for now and just show you uh, just the fast texture and some of the upgrades it's gone through. So let's just, uh, we've got our object selected. Uh, I'm going to throw a melee material onto this. Uh, if you're a Minter Ray user, I highly recommend you start uh, playing around with them because uh, they seem to be pretty amazing um, shaders. So yeah, check them out. Okay, so uh, I've got my fence selected. And uh, this used to be a, an actual like checkbox sort of thing, but now it's actually a, like, just an actual button. So if I click on it, you can see it, it loads uh, the actual name of the object into the dark arts. And I'm going to use that to name my material. So let's click Mila. You can see our fence Mila material has been made. And it's going to uh, open up the attribute editor. And I might just add just another layer. So I'll just add a Fresnel layer and just a glossy reflection. And just with our shader selected, I'm just going to click uh, the select button and click the Mila. And that's just going to update the shader just to have uh, just a nice linear workflow for us. And if I click it a second time, this goes straight to the Mila shader itself. So, quite nice. Um, okay, let's uh, go into the fast texture. So, um, the fast texture has had a few upgrades. One is just the auto detection on shaders. So, it automatically detects that uh, this object here has the fence shader on it. And that's a Mila material. Um, currently, there's no Photoshop file for it. But we'll just get onto creating that. So, I'm just going to click uh, the export UVs. Okay, so we've got our fence UV here. Uh, click F2 just to open up the fast texture 1.01, and I'm just going to click my Mila material. And as you can see, um, it's created the diffuse channel and it's created the glossy reflection channel. Uh, the way that it does this is it actually uh, does it via a um, just via a text file. So I'm just going to click on this one more time, and you can see um, it's, it now detects that there's a Photoshop file for um, for the particular shader. And if I double click on this over here. You can see that it actually opens up uh, the location of that Photoshop file. It shows us uh, there's a text file for the Mila material, which basically just tells us Photoshop that there's a glossy and a diffuse layer. And uh, yeah, we've got our UVs, so all nice and tidy. And if I wanted to, if I didn't have the actual Photoshop file open, I could just click on that, and that'll just open up my Photoshop file. So really nice, uh, efficient workflow for um, just going back and forth from Photoshop. Okay, so we've got our Mila material here. Um, with, uh, Set up a, it's a little wood texture in the background, so I'm just going to copy that over, throw that into our uh, diffuse color. Okay, let's just paste that in, and it's pretty giant, so maybe we'll just uh, try 10% maybe. 
Uh, is it gone? Okay. Okay, let's rotate that around. Okay, scale it up a touch. And. Okay. And we're going to smooth that off a bit. Okay, so that's, that's all nice and cool. Okay, so if we have the texture, maybe let's quickly throw something into the. Uh, maybe it's the weights. Uh, let's just uh, desaturate that quite a bit. And maybe we'll just uh, throw some curves in there. Okay, so pretty happy with that. Ish, ish. Okay, so I'm just going to press F2 again, go back into Photoshop. Just by saving the, layer, saving, the, uh, saving the layers out. And now that you'll notice that the fast texture actually um, just blinked there for a second. So what it's actually done is it's actually automatically loaded. So it's actually got like a, it's an auto detection at the moment. And just with the, these posts and that, I'm, I'm not going to worry about it uh, for the moment. So I'm just going to stick to these guys. Uh, and just going to assign the, uh, the fence blend to them. So now we've got our Mila material all aside. And I'll probably just do that to the post since I'm feeling like being lazy. Okay. Okay, so that's all cool. Um, let's just select all these guys, and uh, I might just snap their pivots to just to the base. So that's all cool. So I'll just select all these objects, right click, and snap pivot to base. Okay, so basically what that's done is if I click on this object, you can see the pivots right at the base of it. And I'll just, uh, I might just uh, ground snap that guy. Okay, so pretty happy with that. Okay, um, one of the other nice features, and like just just having a look at this, you can kind of see that the uh, the text is all quite uh, obviously it's, it's just a direct copy. So there is um, just a new feature put into the Diecats uh, 2.55. So I'm just going to open up our uh, UVs. Uh, yes, let's just basically stick all the UVs here, and we actually have a randomizer now. So if I go to randomize and UV randomizer. So basically, we can uh, we can just uh, randomize our UVs. So these two values here are um, just uh, multipliers. So I set the V to zero. It means that it'll only move uh, left and right in the zero to one space. So I'm gonna click UV, and you see our UVs are being spread out, and you can kind of see that uh, now that our, our textures. If I just expand that, uh, our textures have been uh, nicely randomized for us. So that's kind of a nice cool effect. So if I bring all that stuff back and shut power you these, so I'll just quickly undo that. And if I put the the on one as well and click UV, you notice that it just spreads it all out in that zero to one space. So just getting us a nice fast uh, way of uh, getting a bit of a random texture on all these objects uh, while using the same texture map. So a really nice uh, fast feature. And uh, yeah, one of the um, the other new features that's uh, in the dark arts. Is um, uh, just to do with these these uh, snapping options. So I'm just going to quickly uh, show you. So I'll just delete. Uh, actually, I'll just create a poly plane. Make it super big, like so. And I'll just throw a pile of divisions in there. Okay, so we've got our poly plane. And let's just make this quite dense. So I'll try 30, 40. Yeah, that'll do. Uh, actually, maybe let's go slightly higher, 50. Okay, so I'm just going to select the vertice, like so, and uh, yeah, kind of added something to the di to the to the ground snap that uh, I've been wanting to kind of add for a while, I guess. So if you just uh, create something nice and random, nice hill, like so. Um, basically, what I can do now is I can click on one of these fences. Uh, so I'm just going to select all these fence objects. And then I'm going to select uh, just my surface object glass, which is my ground plane. And if I right click on this, I can go surface snap. And what you'll see is that, I'm just going to put the uh, ambient inclusion on so you can see what's happening. It's basically our objects have been all nicely snapped to the ground. So, uh, yeah, nice, nice little, little feature in there. Uh, it's a it's a bit of the workflow. Uh, one of the other things that is in here. Is you can actually instead of uh, just going uh, surface snap, which uh, basically just keeps their standard rotation, you can actually orient the um, 
the surface map as well. So basically, it'll just follow the flow of the actual geometry. So you can kind of see how the fence is a bit uh, wonky now as it follows the actual flow of the geometry. Um, so anyway, that's pretty much just the end of our little tutorial. Uh, there's a pile of new features in here, and um, I'm going to be releasing quite a few new tutorials uh, in the very new, near future. So anyway, hope you guys enjoy, and uh, I'll see you later. Bye.